Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Trayvon's RV Center here to congratulate you on your purchase of your J Feather 27 BHB travel trailer. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration. On your campsite, your awning, leave plenty of room for that to come in and out unhindered. And on your off campsite, of course, your slide. Leave room for that to come in and out, preferably nothing hanging over top of it. Leave yourself a nice walking path because what else I want you to think about is where your water and power connections are going to be. Your power is going to be all the way back on this corner on your driver's side and your water just around on the rear. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive, unhook your hitch. First thing you can do is level your unit. Your unit's equipped with a power tongue jack. Night docking light, you should drive at night. Clip your raise or lower the unit until you've got a level. Should you lose power under this rubber stopper here is a manual override for this hand crank right here. Speaking of power, check your battery post when you arrive. Make sure those have a wiggle loose coming down the road. Get your unit level. Next thing we do is stabilize it. All four corners of the unit. Three quarter inch jack. Hand crank stabilizing jacks. Just crank these down. Run these down just until they're taut. I do recommend stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are going to protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt, debris, hot blacktop in the summer. Uh, better distribute the weight. Really good investment with your 10% off coupon. So run these down just until you have some type of resistance. Put them down nice and tight on top of your jack pads. Once you have all four of them down, our unit's level and stable. Now we can hook up our power and water. Again, coming back around to your off camp side corner. Will be your big long 30 amp cord. At the end of that 30 amp cord, should you need to plug in the home, your convenience pack will have a 30 to 110 adapter. Got your power hooked up, let's hook up our water. At campsites, we'll hook up to the city water connection. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. Always use this when putting fluid into your unit. Put that in your city water connection, hook up your hose, but don't turn your hose on yet. Come around here to the corner to your hot water heater. Now all we're going to do at this point, folks, this should lift right off here. Is make sure our drain plugs back in. Throw some plumber's tape around that. Get that in there nice and snug. Tighten it up and then you can go ahead and turn it on your hose. Now our unit's level and stable so you can go and deploy your slide if you need to to get into your water taps. Open up all of your water taps. Once you got a steady flow of water coming out of all of them, no more airs in the lines, you can go ahead and shut them off and then you can turn on your hot water heater from indoors. There are a couple reset buttons up here. If your hot water heater doesn't seem to be working, look and see if those need pressed back in. Now let's say we're gonna go camping and we're not gonna use city water. We're gonna use potable water or fresh water. Well, in that case, your fresh water tank is going to be at the front of your off campsite. All right, here's your fresh water tank. Pot of water. Simply fill this with a hose. No need for a water pressure regulator. Two ways to tell when it's full. One, there's an overflow valve right here. Or two on the inside where you check the levels of your tanks 
press your fresh water button that'll tell you when this is full now when using potable water or fresh water is when you're going to want to turn on your water pump don't turn on your water pump when using city water that's already <laughs> all right we got water and power hooked up let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the unit starting here on the off camp side your big pass through storage on this side lighting and your battery disconnect this will come important later when we talk about your carbon monoxide propane detector that will disconnect all the battery power to the unit again your fresh water low point drain for that and then the off hand side here this big storage area do all that your black and gray tanks and your sewage dump Here's your black tank flush. We'll talk about that when we dump your black tanks. Again, your hot water heater, power, cable and satellite input. Back of your unit, your city water connection and an outdoor shower. Your other low point drain for camp water is right there. Spare tire with a cover. You are also prepped for a Furion backup camera. It's a device you purchased from our store that sits on the dash of your tow vehicle, giving you a backup camera for the unit. You also have a ladder. Utilize that and go up there a couple times a year and check the seams of your roof and caulk as needed. Coming to the front of the unit here, you see your outdoor speakers. So there's a vent for your microwave, a vent and access panel for the back of your fridge. That brings us to your outdoor kitchen. Just a little prep area here. Fridge, lighting. 110 back there. Come down the side of the unit here. Here you are your flue for your furnace. Make sure that's not blocked and don't touch that. If you run your furnace, it will get hot. Cable in 110 if you want to set a TV outside. You have a quick connect LP right there. And then your J port bar will go in here. I'll show you that. That's in your storage. A light for at night so you see your steps and in your storage is your J port this bar simply slides in there this sets on top of it and that gives you a grilling area lighting in here that's your docking light for the front of the unit these blue lights and then some lighting from in here your propane does come with a cover and there's on a regulator, simply point it toward the tank you wish to be using, Lefty Lucy to open. And that about covers everything on the outside. Let's go take a look inside your unit. Coming inside, the first thing I like to point out is the fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway. To your left as you come in is your control panel. Here's your brand new battery, fresh water. That's the button I said you can hold down to tell when your potable water's full. Black and gray tanks. Here's where you turn on your hot water heater if you're hooked up to electric. Hot water heater if you're hooked up to gas. Turn on your water pump when using potable water. This will be your awning light. Living room lights. Slide extension and awning. On your awning, you're only going to want to extend that till that bar falls down to 90 degrees and you can see your or the flap falls down to 90 degrees and you can see your brown bar that will extend past that and actually wrap itself up backwards so keep an eye on it when you're running it out make sure you don't run it out too far run that back in here for shut off our awning lights And as your awning finishes back up here, continue our tour. 110 with GFCI reset right here behind your kitchen area sink. On the floor down here next to your fire extinguisher is your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. Now the reason I mentioned that's 12 volt, it's always running off your battery. So if you're gonna be gone for the day, and you are boondocking where you have nothing plugged in charging your battery use that battery disconnect to keep this from running your battery down while you're gone 
Coming in the kitchen, we have a self-explanatory microwave. Let me come over here to your thermostat real quick and shut your AC off. Off. There we go. Oh, I turned the heat on. Alright, come back over here. So over top of your stove here, you have a fan and a light. The glass top here makes an excellent backsplash. Rocker panel light. That light there, that lights your oven. Turn it to light. Hit your spark and there's your flame. Same thing uh, on your oven. Turn it to light. Spark it here, no need for a pilot light and then just set it to the desired temperature. The Furion fridge controls for that are right here. Below your fridge is going to be an access panel to your breaker box and fuses. Coming over here to your television. Turn that on. Show you this is how you release that. Just pull on that. This will swing out. I wanted to show you back here where your cable goes in. There's a little button to push to make that green light come on. That is a digital channel enhancer. So make sure that green light's on before you run your digital channel scans at the local station, at the local parks. Tuck your cords back up in there. And this will snap right back in there. There's your TV working. Shut that off. Below that, you also have a remote for your IRV technology sound system. Turn that on. So these are dual zoned. Whatever's blue is on, you can get it onto FM. Shut it off indoors, now it's just outdoors. AM, FM, Bluetooth, auxiliary hookup. Touch it once for mute, hold it in to shut it off. thermostat right here in the wall you can hold this button in to turn it on and we are going to switch the mode to cool turn your AC on there's your AC running go ahead and shut that off we're going to hold that back in this time our mode we're going to go to heat there's your th furnace kicking on now when I hold this in to shut your furnace off, you'll notice it'll take a few minutes for the fan to shut off on your furnace. It does on all units. Just takes a little bit longer than the AC. 110 in here, lighting. Maintain your plumbing. Behind this panel here is your plumbing. Mostly PEX in these uh, new units. In the ceiling, hand crank open. Exhaust vent. Shut our lighting off. Bunks have their own individual lighting. 110 and USB is up in the corner. This will flip up for extra storage here. Here's your lighting for over here. Your sofa, simply jack knives. Lift up on the front, lay it down, and that quickly you have a bed. Lift up the front, pull it back towards you, and you're back to a sofa. Your dinette, simply lift up on this table. The legs will pull out. Set your dinette down onto these pieces here. Put your back on top and it will give you another sleeping area. A little extension for some prep area. Come back into your bed bedroom. Another hand crank open, power exhaust vent. You're prepped for a TV. Got a backer right here for it. Cable to 110. This is a template for solar. If you ever decide to wire this complete thing for solar, this is the template for the text to know where to start it at. Next to your bed, some individual lighting, 110s, one touch lighting above your bed. 
these lights here are actually blue accent lights back behind that area same thing on this side and a little bit of storage under your bed well that about covers everything on the inside let's talk about a few things before we're leaving doors and drawers this door here make sure it is snapped open Make sure that door is closed. Make sure all doors and drawers are closed up in here. Nothing's going to impede your slide from coming in. Then we're going to come up here and shut off my living room lights. That is going to show me any individual lighting that I need to go through the unit and shut off. Any of this one touch. A bathroom I know is off. And all of our lighting's off. Now we can turn our living room lights back on from our control panel. And retract our slide. Again, doors and drawers. Make sure nothing's going to be in the way of and impede the slide from coming in. Make sure it's just so. Uh, Extension is pushed back down. Just that quickly we're in. Shut off our interior lights. Exit the unit. Now for these steps, you want to make sure this exterior door is all the way open. Otherwise this could catch on it. Lift your steps up and in. Lock that in. Lock and deadbolt your unit. Lift and turn this handle. At this point, we're going to bring up our stabilizer jacks, unhook our cable, unhook our water, lock up our dinette area, bring our back steps up, sit in like so. We are going to start dumping low point drains. If we're hooked up at a campsite, dump both of those. And if we are boondocking, we're gonna dump this low point drain right here. Then you're gonna come to your hot water heater, lift up on this pressure release valve. That would dump the remaining hot water out of your hot water heater. Put that back down, otherwise your door won't close. Then. You can pull your drain plug and put your door back on. Hook up your hitch and head on up to the dump station. At the dump station, park accordingly. Get back in a second. Your dump is going to be behind the tires on your off-camp side toward the rear or your driver's side of your tow vehicle. Hook up the sewage hose, comes to your convenience pack, and pull your black holding tank. Once it sounds like that black tank's no longer draining, leave that handle open. Again, with your water pressure regulator, hook up to this tank flush. Hook up the hose at the dump station, and let that run for a good five minutes. You're gonna wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. Unhook that hose, close that up, close your black handle. Pull your first gray. After that's done, close that one, pull your last gray. These are going to be cleaner water, sinks and showers, and that'll clean your sewage hose out for you. And then you can conveniently and sanitarily store your sewage hose right in your bumper. And head on home. Again, we thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this shea feather for many years to come. Happy camping!